Hey everybody, Mr. On Demand, man with the master plan. The electric company had a master plan too, and that was to shut my electricity off with a planned power outage. Well, I knew about it ahead of time, so I knew it was coming. The great thing about that was it gave me an opportunity to do maintenance on a lot of my stuff, like my NAS server, which is going to allow you all to see my complete server, what it is and how it works. This is a server that runs a web hosting, run, r runs FTP, it runs Jellyfin, MB, uh, Plex, uh, it runs a variety of things. I'm not going to go over all of that stuff in detail. What I'm just going to go over is the server itself, why I picked what I picked and what I'm using and why I'm using it. Hopefully this is, uh, you know, good information for you uh, and uh, it helps you out in some way. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section. Uh, this I'm showing you is a home setup. This isn't for really for uh, commercial enterprise or anything like that. This is good for people who want a really good home server that isn't going to break the bank because, I mean, it's a home server, right? You're not trying to spend an exorbitant amount of money, but you want something reliable and solid that isn't stupid slow either. And that's what this is. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm bringing in the cases that hold the hard drives. The first two are the main ones. Those run, each run on a separate 3.2 Gen 2 USB port on my server, and there's the server. The tall one there is the backup to the first two. There's a total of 16 hard drives in those three cases, and there is one hard drive in the main server for storage, and then there is a NVMe boot drive in the server as well. The server is a 8th Gen i7, and it is a small form factor Dell Optiplex PC and it didn't come with 3.2 Gen 2 so there is a card in it that gave me two 3.2 Gen 2 ports with 20 gig of bandwidth going to those first two boxes. While the third box I wasn't worried about the, per the speed as much because it's just a backup box so the first two back up to the tall one. Now I'm cleaning all the dust and dirt out of these because dust kills electronics so you got to make sure you do your maintenance regularly on all of your equipment and we're going to open up the inside of this and we're going to clean the dust out i use a blower for this i don't use a air compressor uh, or cans of air although you can use uh, electronic uh, approved cans of air to clean them out but i've used a uh, blower for 30 years on these computers basically it's a shop vac uh, that works also as a uh, blower um, and it works great so no problems uh, here I'm checking my fans on the hard drive boxes it's important to always check your fans across all your electronics if they're gummed up with some dust and dirt you're gonna want to clean the dust and dirt off the fans you need to clean the blades themselves for that uh, and that will help it cool much better because it'll push a lot more air and that is a you know really important thing so I'm putting putting them back together now putting some screws in and uh, making sure they're in there nice and solid these particular design is uh, of hard drive cases are great if you want to see videos on those boxes by themselves uh, subscribe so you can see the videos that I put out on those and show you the performance Here's the server itself with a 80 plus bronze power supply. The 80 plus rating is important. Uh, those are the cards for the USB and the 2.5 gig ethernet along with a, a HDMI uh, adapter there that turns on the HDMI video for the device. That is important because I can't do hardware transcoding without something enabling it because this doesn't get plugged into an actual monitor. Now. Here is a view of the inside of the unit and we are going to go to show you how easily this comes apart. Toolless design, no screwdrivers needed. You can usually work on it right where it sits which makes it a very convenient uh, type of machine to have as a home server. I think this is a great option as a home server. I have some videos coming that's going to go over in detail all of, the, all of this equipment and also tell you prices and give you examples of what you can expect to pay 
to get the, uh, like this whole setup together and I'm going to tell you the prices are very reasonable for you to get a really nice like i5 or i7 NAS set up like this and the performance is terrific too. Um, now getting into the internals, there's the NVMe and the RAM. So you've got upgradeability on this machine uh, when it comes to the RAM and that and the, and the, and the hard drive. Uh, you can put upgradable cards in this. The scalability and upgradability is absolutely tremendous. And the fact that it's toolless and comes apart easily to work on is a great, great thing. You also have all the benefits of being able to load any OS on these that you want, whether it be Linux or whether it be Open NAS or whether it be Windows, you can load anything and run that as your operating system for your server. So you're going to have all the flexibility. You can do whatever you want and uh, you're not pigeonholed or stuck on any kind of software or OS whatsoever. As you can see, this thing goes together very quickly. It didn't take me long at all to put this back together. And if you get the top down right, then you can push it in and it slides right back on and it snaps in and you don't have to worry about, you know, any tools, like I said. Now this is where my, all my equipment sits. It just sits in an open area uh, so it cools well. The server and the hard drives all sit right here and they run 24 hours a day. This is, runs my Plex, it runs my HTTP, FTP, it runs my Jellyfin, it runs all of those different servers, uh, including what I'm experimenting with with some uh, home automation stuff as well. Uh, so it's actually a wonderful thing to, you know, integrate all of that into one place. If you want to do uh, things like your own home lab, this is a great option as well. Uh, so you can actually have a lot of flexibility. And we're almost done. We're putting the server back in place. And uh, there, goes the, there goes the server. And everything will be absolutely terrific right here. I hope you guys like this information. I hope this helps you out in deciding what you need to pick up for yourself to try to build and make your own uh, server setup in your home. And if it did, please leave a thumbs up down below and let me know how it helped you. And if you have questions, also comment down below and give me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you and let you know what my opinion is on, on anything you have a question about. And we're almost done getting everything positioned and everything put back in there right. Uh, this makes it really easy to get to all the cables. There's also a 2.5 gig uh, switch down there. Uh, in the future, I'll be upgrading this to 10 gig, and I'll probably talk about my my talk about that as well in the future. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to watch more content like this, please subscribe and like and leave a comment down below what you liked. And if you didn't like it, leave a comment about what you didn't like and let me know so I can try to make better videos. And I'll see you all in the next one. You guys have a wonderful day and bye-bye for now.